To another Sunday School Short, today we're in Genesis 4 through 7, walking through the Old Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. Like, subscribe, and share, and hit the bell notification for when new devos come out. Everybody needs one. Share it, especially with somebody that needs a daily devotion. Get in here with me. There's a lot in here. I'm just hitting the high points. I'm just your encourager, your spark plug, encouraging you to be a daily Bible reader. Genesis 4 is where we see where we are now. We're in this fallen world that we live in now. Um, so we'll start right out here. Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd and Cain was essentially a farmer. Verse 3, when it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Verse 4, Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs of his flock. The Lord accepted Abel's gift, but did not accept Cain and his gift. Cain became angry. The Lord says, hey, why are you angry? You will be accepted if you do what is right. All right, see, Cain gave something. He gave some of what he had. Abel gave his very best, okay? Why are you angry? You'll be accepted if you do what is right. Sin is crouching at your door, eager to control you. And we can all listen to this one, all right? Sin is crouching at your door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. Get in here. Uh, don't neglect the reading. Cain killed Abel, all right? And it, there's a lot in there, but it, it just says, essentially, Cain killed Abel. The Lord says, where's your brother? And Cain says, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord says, what have you done? I hear your brother's blood crying out from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished. The ground won't yield crops for you anymore. You'll be a wanderer, essentially. Cain says, your punishment is too great. Anyone who finds me will want to kill me. So the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone that might want to kill Cain. And who might want to kill him? Maybe some of his nieces or nephews or maybe even his, his mom or dad. Sin had entered the world at this point. Those are the people. It says Adam and Eve had many sons and daughters. After it speaks specifically of a few, but it had many sons and daughters. He settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. And then verses 14 through 24 speaks of uh, the, the descendants of Cain. And uh, sometimes a lot of this in the lineage is easier to listen on an audio version of the lineages. So that you don't get tangled up and tripped up with the pronunciations. I use the Blue Letter Bible app. I use that also if you want to know where I'm at. I'm in a, um, you go into the hit the symbol in the bottom in the center, in the middle of it, and uh, you'll pull up a daily reading plan, and I'm in the chronological, one-year chronological plan. Click on that, in the bottom it'll tell you where to go, where we are. You can also use the speaker function, uh, speaker function and it will read it to you. Sometimes easier when you get in those lineages. Uh, Adam and Eve having another son named Seth. That's the way four ends. For Genesis 5. People had extended lifetimes then, uh, this was changed in chapter 6, verse 3, in the years of Noah to about 120 years. But they didn't live forever like in the Garden of Eden as intended. But they did have extensive lifetimes. In verse 3, Adam, when Adam was 130 years old, he became the father of a son who was just like him in his very image. And, and we were created again back in the previous Devo, in the first three chapters of... Genesis, we were created in, or Adam was created in God's image. He became uh, the father of a son who was just like him in his very image. He named his son Seth. After the birth of Seth, Adam and Eve lived another, or Adam lived another 800 years and he had other sons and daughters. Adam lived to be 930 years old, then he died. Again, the question arises hey, who was Cain scared of? Again, sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, or nieces and nephews, that kind of thing. And it talks about Cain's wife. Who was Cain's wife? Well, it was a niece and nephew, or it was a, a sister. Because I mean, it was a niece or a sister because um, 
the human race was still genetically pure at that time. There wasn't a law against incestual relations until the time of Moses, hundreds of years later. Uh, Adam and Eve had numerous children. And again, that command, they were given the command to fill the earth, multiply, and be fruitful and multiply. So generations afterward, afterwards did the same very thing. Genesis 6, again, get into the reading with me. Some scholars believe that the sons of God here mentioned would have been uh, the sons in the line of Seth, Mary, marrying daughters in the line of Cain, therefore weakening the influence, the godly influence uh, in society and in family, rising up in pride and self-worth, those types of things. God was not saying that he had made a mistake by creation in verse 6. He was sorry and heartbroken in what they had done to themselves. But Noah, verse 8, found favor in the Lord. He was a righteous man. He was the only blameless man on earth. He walked in close fellowship with God. He had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Verse 13, God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence. Build a boat made of cypress wood and waterproof it um, with tar inside and out. This thing was a 450 feet long, a football field and a half. If you haven't been to the one, I think it's in Kentucky, the, um, the art exhibit. It is an art exhibit. It is amazing. Go there. If you can, um, 450 feet long, a football field and a half, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high, over four stories high. Look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood. I will destroy every living thing that breathes, verse 17. And in 18, but I will confirm my covenant with you. Um, enter the boat. Your wife, you, your wife, your sons and their wives. Take a pair of every kind of animal. They will come to you to be kept alive, verse 20. See, he was not only creator that we found out in the first three chapters of Genesis, but he is also sustainer of life. So Noah did everything exactly as the Lord commanded. That's in verse 22. Chapter 7. Seven pairs of certain animals. These were the ones that were approved for sacrifice and for eating were taken and one pair of the others. Again, these are just the high points. Get in there. God said, it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Verse 4. Noah did everything as the Lord commanded, it says again. He was 600 years old when the flood covered the earth. Uh, he went on board, him, his wife, his sons, and their wives. The animals entered. And remember, these are just species. So, like, not every type of dog. Not a poodle and a lab and a, and a mastiff. And all that. No, it was and a wolf, all that. It was the species. It was the canine species, the feline species. And then, then we'll talk about microevolution after that, you know, where the different breeds came about. But this was just the species, more than likely. Uh, verse 10. After seven days, the waters had flood, the, the waters of the flood came and covered the earth. All the underground springs erupted as well. The rain fell for 40 days and 40 nights. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. Verse 16. He closed the door. The water grew so that even it even covered the highest mountains. All were destroyed. Only Noah and his family survived. Verse 24. The floodwaters covered the earth for 150 days. Nobody can swim, tread water that long. God bless you. Get in there, like, subscribe, and share. Have a great day.